All right, we are starting this. Uh, this is the first. Uh, well, this is uh, the first game I'm casting for the beginner net runner tournament. Uh, show me your hand. Click the hand and. Go to see. Okay, thanks. So we it looks like we're having wizard versus HB. Uh this HB hand is not this is a very borderline hand. I mean Chimera isn't really a good early game ice. You really want to put it on a remote server because Paying two credits every time they run uh, HQ or R&D is just terrible. Um, but Eli is very good at early game on that. You know, it also has a melange, it has an agenda. So, I mean, it's borderline on hand. I, I don't keep any... Yes. Ready to start. Uh, Wizard has Mimic... Retrieval run, which is interesting. I'm expecting some Femme Fatales or Mooring Stars out here. Spinal Mode, I don't see this card a lot. It uh, deals a brain damage to you every time you lose a trace, but it uh, has two recurring credits and uh, one mem MU, so one memory in it. So it's pretty good if you don't get traced. But if you get traced, it's just obviously bad. Wild Side goes with the Retrieval run a little bit. And Sure Gamble is just always a good card. Let's see what uh, Byroid drew. He drew an Eve campaign and put down a Melange. I'm assuming you put down the, yeah, Chimera in that server. He's leaving his HQ open, which is a very risky move when you have an agenda in hand. Um, I guess he didn't really have much of a choice, though, because you have to defend R&D, especially against Anarch, because they have the medium which can access multiple uh, cards off of R&D, so... Uh, and he only had one one good ice to defend it, and so... I might I might have done the same thing as him. I wonder if the, if um, uh, Circus runs, if he will res the Chimera. That'll cost him two credits, but will prevent Chimera from, or Wizard from getting in there, Circus. I'm not sure if that's actually worth it, though. Um, Circus Fire said there was, might be some lag, so, from his end, so, that's, oh, he's making a run. Um, it looks like it. We'll see if he, okay. Yeah, uh, Byroid 86 did res the Chimera. That could get expensive very fast. This is why I don't like Chimera very much. Um. It's really only good if you can score agendas behind it early game. Uh, just using it like he's doing now to defend a melange is sort of a weak play. Because, oh, he even changed it to a century. So Circus could, if he wanted to, play Mimic, then run and break Chimera. Because this stays as a century until the end of the turn when it flips face down again. So that's a play I do a lot uh, versus Chimera. I wait to see what they change it into. Then I play the breaker if I have it um, that matches the type that they changed it into, and then run again, and that lets me get through Chimera uh, without Crypsis or any uh, any uh, special icebreakers like that. We'll see if he's probably gonna trash the Eve campaign because he is Wizard. Wizard has three credits for trashing um, Corporation cards. I'm sorry, I have the censored versions on all these cards. Which, I really should get that changed. Uh, I, haven't, I haven't really looked into it. I just realized right now that <laughs> I've, I have all the cards memorized with the people I'm casting. Might not, so that's a good idea to get those. But Eve Campaign, you know, it's, it's a money asset similar to uh, Donna's Campaign. Uh, what never happened like that?
I'm sorry, I'm getting too caught up in this. So we have... Huh. Seems right. So we'll see what Bioroid 86 is doing. Uh, oh, he drew a Janus. Janus 1.0. It's a Bioroid Ice. Uh, it has four subroutines, do one brain damage for each one of those subroutines. And you know, it can be broken with clicks like all the Bioroid Ice. Um, this card is... Uh, again, I, I, do, I do not like it very much. <laughs> just 15 credits is so expensive. And then it doesn't even stop the runner. They could always just, you know, take the brain damage and move on. I mean, they can't always do that because... You know, if they get brain damage too much, then they'll get flatlined and lose the game. Alright, Wizard is making another run on HQ, which he could hit an agenda. He's either, oh, he hit the Janus. Byroid's been getting pretty lucky on these HQ accesses. Um, yeah, Janus is a scary one to see. <laughs> if the corporation has 15 credits, you, know, you could always just face, you know, Four brain damage out of nowhere. It's kind of uh, important to play around it. He played the sure gamble, which is a good move. There's a melange here. Uh, wild side, yeah, I was expecting him to play wild side to draw. Wild side is very, very good. Uh, it doesn't seem as good in the wizard deck. I, this is the first wizard deck I've seen with wild side. Um, it's very good with noise because noise likes to play lots and lots of viruses, and wild side gives you the cards to, to draw lots of viruses and play them. Oh, he actually drew a card. It's he drew a Xanadu, which um, raises the res cost on all ice by one. So, I have not seen Xanadu in play ever, I don't believe. Uh, it's a good card, but it's expensive and it's unique, so you can only have one out on the table at a time. So, uh, it's also best when it's used early, but multiple copies will clog your hand. So if you r run one of them, you're, you're probably not going to draw it early game. But if you run, you know, three of them, then you're probably going to draw, you know, an extra copy or two that you don't want. So it's kind of a tricky balance on how many Xanadus you want in your deck. I do kind of like it, though. Um... It's not the best card in the world, but it's pretty far from the worst. Oh, also, uh, he's running as Eli. Eli is a barrier with uh, two end-the-run subroutines that can be broken with clicks. Um, this is a very good card. It's one of the best Corp cards from... It's one of, one of the best ice uh, in the Genesis cycle, actually. Uh, also, we're running into the issue with Wildside. When you're playing Wildside against uh, Hasbiroid, they have a lot of these Byroid Ice that can be broken with clicks, but Wild Side automatically takes up one of your clicks per turn. So you have fewer clicks to deal with these Byroid Ice. These Byroid Ice are very, very annoying. They can be clicked through. You don't need a breaker to get through them, but uh, you need to be able to spend clicks. Wild Side takes up your clicks, so you cannot uh, you know, break through these Ice as easily. That's another one of the disadvantages of... Wild side. Uh, it's a very powerful card, but it has a lot of disadvantages. Um, yeah, he's just running HQ every turn, which I like. I like this play. I might actually hit, have hit HQ a little bit more than he did, but you know, it's hard to tell if they have an agenda or if they're just bluffing you. You know, and they're just like wanting you to come in on HQ. Um. I'm thinking that uh, Circus should play a card so he doesn't have to discard, yeah. I would have played the Xanadu before I ran, just because, you know, the Eli, he wasn't breaking the Eli with clicks anyway, and, you know, he would force Bioroid to pay an extra credit for Eli. Also, Xanadu is very, very good against uh, Chimera, because Chimera de every turn, so you have to keep paying that two credit to res it. Um, it's very, very powerful. Uh, it, Xanadu, like, makes it 50% time more expensive to keep re-resing it. Uh, he's just sitting on 
Byroid is just sitting on Melange. This is the thing. Oh my gosh. This is really what uh, you don't want to have happen as the runner. You do not want them to just be able to use Melange Mining Corp every turn and gain, you know, 21 credits. 21 credits is huge. He could res any ice. He could play any, almost any operation in the game. He could do basically anything with 21 credits. He could res Janus. Just straight up pay 15 credits and res Janus. So any face down ice he plays from now on could be a Janus. And Circus does not know anything about that. Um, so this is actually just terrible for Circus. I really think he should have trashed the Melange earlier when he had the chance when the Chimera was set to being a sentry and he had a Mimic in his hand. I really think that that was the play. To play the Mimic, run the Chimera, and break it, and then trash the Melange. He didn't know it was a Melange, but he's Wizard. If there's a card back here, he's going to either be able to steal it, uh, if it's an agenda, or trash it if it's an uh, uh, asset or an upgrade. That's really what I would have done if I was, uh, if I was Circus. Um, you can just cannot let them sit back and melange every turn. Also, if I was Circus, I would force him to res this Chimera every turn. Just run it every turn. Spend one of your clicks. I know you have Wild Side out, which makes your clicks more precious. But if you run it every single turn, he has to pay, you know, two credits. And with Xanadu out, it's three credits per turn to prevent his melange from being trashed. You can spend one click to make him spend three credits. That is insanely good value right now. I really think that Circus should be just repeatedly running the server over and over and over and over again every single turn. Um, until the year gets through, or, you know, something else changes, like the Melange gets trashed anyway. Two Biotic Labors. This means he can play Biotic Labor and score Accelerate Beta Test on the same turn. Um... Which, this is, that's a big part of this. Oh, here comes the Janus. Oh, no, he put Janus on his remote server. Oh, that is just brutal. That is just brutal. And an Ichi on top of it. Oh, that is just really, really, really brutal. And he's throwing the cell portal down. In front of HQ, to just sort of as a bluff right now. This cell portal will not actually do anything. Uh, Circus will run it. He will not be able to break it, but then Cell Portal will derez itself and Circus will come right back at it. So this Cell Portal doesn't do actually anything right now. If there was another Ice in front of it, then it would do something. But right now it doesn't do anything. So it's more of a bluff right now, or a potential setup for future plays. And he's drawing cards. Um, Circus is usually when I have Wild Side in play. This is more of a personal playstyle issue, but I do not like drawing cards when I have a wild side in play. Wild side is all my draws. Oh, he has a doppelganger. So he has two consoles. He has spinal modem and doppelganger. This is something I don't really ever see. Uh, it's I. It's good to have multiple copies of a console in your deck, but normally I only see you have one you know type of console. You would either choose Spinal Modem or Doppelganger, depending on which uh, which card you, which uh, strategy you're using, um, which one better fits your strategy. I have thought about you know switching it up and you know running like two Spinal Modems and Doppelganger, not those exact cards, but you know that sort of thing. But I just never had a deck where that com comes up and is useful. I really not a fan. I would think that one or the other would be better. And he's just shipping it back to Bioroid. Uh, not even running the server. Uh, this wild side is actually becoming more of a liability than help. Although he is, although uh, Circus is really digging for something. I'm not sure what he's digging for. He keeps drawing cards. I'm not sure why. Oh, and here we go. He's scoring his, uh, uh, what's that card? The Project Vitruvius. Um, Project Vitruvius doesn't actually do anything. It gives you, it's a 3-2 agenda. It doesn't actually do anything unless it's, uh, over-advanced. Unless you advance it more than three times. But then it can, 
If it's advanced more than three times, you put counters on it equal to the number of times you over advanced it. So if you have four, if you advance it four times and then score it, you put one counter on it. Five times and score it, you put two counters on it. Then you can use those counters to return cards from your archives to your HQ, which is very powerful. Oh, there's the Ace Ops and the Katie Jones. This could be a turning point in the match. Uh, I doubt it. I think that Circus is very far behind right now. But the Aesops could potentially let him turn off Wildside if he wanted to. Katie Jones is probably the best economy card in the game. You can use a click to put three counter credits on her, or spend a click to take all the credits off of her. But you can only use her once per turn. Um, it's a very powerful card. Um, probably the best economy card in the game, and it's neutral. It just gives you so much, so many credits. Um, you can bump her up to 9 and take them all off of her and go from 0 to 9 credits in one action. And it's, oh my gosh, so much. Katie Jones is the scariest card to fight when you're playing uh, Corporation. <sighs> so I wonder if he found what he was looking for. Uh, he might turn off Wildside now using Aesops to trash it. I'm not sure though. Ooh, Viper. Oh, uh, good thing that Circus trashed that, uh, threw away that, uh, Spinal Modem, because Viper is one of the few Trace cards that uh, HB actually has. It has two Trace 3s, um, it's sort of like an Enigma, except with two higher strength, and each of its subroutines is Trace 3 instead of automatically going off. It's a very, very, very good card. It's HB has a lot of these cards that are really good on central servers, like, you know, uh, HQ or R&D. But they're not very good at, uh, on uh, remote servers because uh, you can, with the bioroids like uh, Eli and uh, Ichi, and Tilla, not really Janus, but you can just get through them with by paying clicks. You don't need a breaker, which is really, really big, and that's a really huge weakness. Um, and the Viper is a similar one. You can't get through with clicks, but if you just have credits, you can get through it. You don't need to play a breaker. You can just pay six credits to break both of its subroutines. Or if you not care, don't care about losing a click, you can you know pay uh, three credits to break its subroutine. The, the the to beat the second trace and the run trace. The corp can boost them up, so if they really out money you like Viroid is doing now, they can stop you from getting through. But it's generally not worth it to boost the traces uh, on Viper. Here's a Femme Fatale. This could be huge for uh, uh, Circus Circus Fire. He could Femme Fatale. He can use Retrieval Run. He can discard Femme Fatale at the end of the turn, use Retrieval Run next turn, and possibly bypass one of these ice. Uh, uh, Femme Fatale is actually really really excellent uh it costs nine which is a, a ton that is the one real drawback to the card it costs nine and it really is terrible putting it on a you know a face down ice that you don't know what it is you don't know whether it's a janice or a pop-up window <laughs> so you don't want to use it on face down ice unless you have to but it's very very strong otherwise He's running on HQ. Uh, I don't think that that uh, Bioroid will res the cell portal because it actually does nothing right now. It only does something if it has an ice in front of it. So this uh, this tells um, since uh, Bioroid didn't res this uh, ice, that tells that Bioroid or Circus that something's up. That this ice is Bioroid is 27 credits. He can res every ice in the game right now, um, but uh, you know he didn't res it. What does that tell you? That tells you that it does nothing, or it's uh, either a very situational ice like Burke's Bugs, which can trash a program if you pay a ton of credits, essentially, or you, it's something really really weird I, I or it's like something weird like cell portal or uh, I, I don't know what else there aren't very many ice that you wouldn't res in this situation so the fact that he isn't is a pretty big giveaway on what it actually is a 
We'll see if, uh... I'm not sure if I should tell Circus to use Desperado or not, or Doppelganger. Doppelganger, when you make his... Oh, he got the agenda! This agenda was in from the very first turn. The very first turn of the game, Bioroid had that agenda in his hand. Circus finally, after five, I think five runs on, on HQ, finally pulled it, so... <laughs> I'm not sure what else he's going to do with this, uh... He's just clicking for credits. Um, yeah, there's not much else you can do. I, I'm i not really sure what Circus's deck is set up to do, but it looks like it's set up to do something. It's got Vamp, which lets you pay any number of credits to make it... Ooh, Midori. This lets you replace an Ice. It's an upgrade. Uh, it allows you to replace an Ice uh, uh, that the runner is approaching with an Ice from your hand. So you know, he could... Uh, if uh, Circus was to run right now and got to here... Uh, before he, uh, started access, before he started, um, oh, I guess, yeah, he could, before he started on Chimera, uh, approaching Chimera, before he started encountering it, uh, uh, Bioroid could switch it, Resmidori, and switch it out, switch out this Chimera for the Cell Portal in his hand, which, the Chimera would go to his hand, the Cell Portal would come out, and then he could res the Cell Portal, that's actually very strong right now, because this server is not one you want to have to run repeatedly because of this Janus. Uh, and this Ichi is also very, very tricky to get by. There's the Crypsis! Oh my goodness! I'm sure this is what Circus was looking for since the very, very beginning of the game, when he had a Chimera out. Ch Crypsis is the best way to deal with Chimera, because Chimera becomes a type... Uh, you know, it can change its type, but Crypsis doesn't care what type it is. Um, the pro only problem now is that these are some very, uh, big ice and very... Crypsis is really, really bad at breaking multiple ice. Uh, this is, that's one of Crypsis' weaknesses. Because you have to spend, put, use a click to put a virus counter on Crypsis. And you have to remove a virus counter for every ice that you break using it. So if you have to break three or four ice with Crypsis, you know, that takes up an entire turn's worth of clicks to do, and it's not it's not something you can repeatedly do. Plus Crypsis, uh Yeah, I didn't know if I should tell you. They're talking about the doppelganger last turn. Uh, yeah, so this is a beginner tournament, so it's, it's probably a little bit more lenient. Uh, I'm usually pretty lenient with people in general, my opponents, uh, th since I don't know what Bioroid wants me to do. I don't want to, you know, mess with his his game. If he... He didn't install Crypsis. This is an interesting thing. Uh, I guess he's playing a Retrieval Run Crypsis, but that's not actually very much worth it. Retrieval run costs three, and you also have to run in archives. If you make a run in archives, you can uh, return a program from your heap to and install it for free. Uh, what's this card? He drew an ice wall. Ice wall is one of the best ice in the game, just because it costs one and it ends the run. <laughs> that is literally the only reason why ice wall is so good. And it only costs one influence, so almost every corp deck will have three ice walls. It's just it's just that good. Yeah, <laughs> 35 credits. This is just unreal. Um, if this were a more advanced game, there's no way that this melange would would still be in play. Uh, Circus would have trashed it. If the, the runner would have trashed it a long time ago. Um, uh, Circus had an opportunity, but he, he missed it out, unfortunately. Uh, now he has the Crypsis, apparently. Um, well, we might be seeing a Crypsis soon. He's still pumping up Katie. Wow, she's got 12 credits on her. So it doesn't look like it, but uh, Circus uh, 
almost almost has 22 credits, really, because Katie has 12 on her. So he's actually getting close to Byroid's uh, credits, which is he's still pretty far away, though. Um, this R&D interface is one of the strongest cards from the Future Proof uh, set. Uh, it's sort of like medium. I don't know why he doesn't have medium. Why is R and D interface not medium? But sort of like a medium that uh, it lets you look at one additional card. It doesn't have any virus scanners. It doesn't mess around with the virus scanners. It doesn't cost MU, which is huge. Um, but it costs Circus to influence. I would think that medium would be better, just because it's in faction, not not because it's a stronger card, just because it's in faction and it's. Uh, uh, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Then manually. Me either. After access. Okay, yep, well, we figured it out. Apparently, DB0 did automate retrieval run, which is pretty awesome. DB0 has gone above and beyond the Call of Duty on the automating of various cards and stuff. The only problem is sometimes it's hard to remember what's automated and what isn't, what you have to do manually. <laughs> oh, we drew a card? I, I bet Byroid really wants agendas right now. Um, he has the Biotic Labor, so he can score another three-cost agenda just straight up out of hand. But he probably wants to put one in the server because it's going to be hard for um, Circus to get through the server. Less hard now that he's a Crypsis, but still pretty hard. He's installing another ice. I think that's Eli. Yeah, Eli and Cellporal. <laughs> Cell Portal is not a card I love. It would be really, really good here. Which, I, I like that uh, Byroid is running Midadorian in his deck with Cell Portal. Uh, those cards work very well in combination with each other, because the biggest problem with Cell Portal is it doesn't do anything unless it's the bottom ice on the server. Unless it's the last ice of the Arrival Encounters, it doesn't really do anything. <laughs> this server is so tough to break that uh, I really... I'm not going to call it right now, but I think that Circus Fire has a, a really uphill battle right now. Uh, there are four ice here. Uh, it's going to be tricky, but Byroid can res them all right now, I believe. That's four, nine, <laughs> 25. Um, yeah, if he was to res this, this would be tw 28. He does have enough credits to res them all. Even has enough credits to res Cell Portal too, if he wants to Midori Cell Portal in there, which is going to be very, very difficult for. Um, it's going to be very, very difficult f for uh, Circus to actually do any runs because he really can't afford to break very many of these right now with just his Crypsis. I um. So I, I think Circus waited too long. He spent too time, too much time digging through his deck. Uh, I'm not sure how many breakers he has. I don't actually have deck lists out um, from these two players. I'm just going off of the cards I see them playing. So yeah, I'm not sure. Um, we have a special order here, which is another. Very good card. This is a good splash in your deck. If you have two extra influence and you're not sure what to use it on, it's a good idea to use special order usually. Um, it's one of those good cards. It's just it's just always nice to have one of those in your deck. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure why this is R and D interface and not medium. I would think that medium would synergize better with wizards, uh, wizard and doppelganger. We're actually playing special order here. He got out of the Corroder. This surprises me. Um, not that Corroder is not a great card, and it's an Infaction card. It's an Anarch card. It's very, very good. It's probably... It's, it's definitely the best Fractor in the game. Uh, if you want to break barriers, there's 
pretty much no better way to do it than this corroder, but, uh, he, but Circus is running retrieval runs, which lets you get back cards and ignore their costs. We get back, um, programs and ignore their costs. The, one of the common strategies when you're playing with retrieval run is to play, um, Cards like Femme Fatale, which costs nine, and Circus is running Femme Fatale. He does have a Femme Fatale in his archives right now, or his heap right now. Um, but another, ooh, it looks like he's building. We're building another remote. But uh, another strategy for um, the other card that's commonly paired with Retrieval Run is Mooring Star, which is a, uh, I believe it costs nine. Uh, it's a Barrier Breaker, it's like 7 strength, I think, and you can pay 1 credit to break any number of subroutines on a barrier. Uh, yeah, it, I believe it's strength 7, and it costs like 9 or something like that. Mmm. So. That is a very, very, uh, so, yeah, that, I see that a lot if people are going to be playing Retrieval Run. This is, this is one of the strategies people were talking about when Retrieval Run came out, was, uh, play, was discard the Mooring Star somehow, play Retrieval Run to get it back, and you make, essentially make a ton of credits if you manage to do that successfully, uh, because Retrieval Run only costs three plus a run on Archives, and, you know, Paying three plus, you know, the card and the click, because archives is usually undefended. So if you pay three plus a card and a click to get out a mooring star, that's a really good deal. Um, so I'm surprised that we have a corroder instead of a mooring star. <laughs> that's sort of a long-winded way of saying that. I'm mildly surprised. I'm also surprised we haven't seen any uh, code gate breakers, any decoders. Uh, I would expect some number of decoders. I would expect the... I'm actually not sure what to expect out of these. I, I would expect the Yogg.0 so it can break, you know, co small code gates for free, but... That's the most commonly played in Anarch decks, and generally in all decks right now. But some people like to play Gordian Blade instead. Because, you know, you can pump Gordian Blade and you don't have to do tricks like data suck counts or something to lower its strength, lower the strength of the ice. You can just bump up Gorian Blade's strength. Um, but Gorian Blade costs three influence, and it looks like, uh, Circus's wizard deck is a little influence light. Oh, we put a virus counter on Crypsis. I really think that, uh, Circus should really trash this wild side right now. It's not really doing that much, except costing him one click a turn. So, are, what are we doing? This Eve campaign is, uh, it gives you two, you put 14 credits on it when you res it. it, gives you two credits per turn, and you trash it when they're all out. It's like a Donna's campaign, only with different numbers on it. Uh, it's a very powerful card. Um... It's really only good if you protect it, especially against Wizard, because Wizard gets the three recurring credits. The biggest strength of Eve is its trash cost of five, but it also takes, you know, but it's also a really good idea for the runner to trash Eve if they're able to. Um, so, you know, you have to defend it, even just lightly defend it, like this ice wall will sort of protect it. I mean, it did. Uh, Circus could have ran and trashed the Eve if he wanted to. It probably wasn't a good idea to do that, but he could have if he wanted to. Now, Byroid 86 is really... We haven't seen the pawn shop get used. I'm not that surprised, but he hasn't pawned anything yet. I think he should really pawn this wild side right now, because this is more of a liability than anything. Oh no, Ash. I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. It's got a tr It's, uh... You know, a unique upgrade. It's got Trace 4, and when the run is successful, you get a Trace 4 on, on the server ashes. You do a Trace 4. If uh, the Trace is successful, then the runner can only access Ash and not any of the other cards. So if he throws this into this remote, <laughs> and he gets through all these ice, and then all of a sudden he hits Ash, and then just can't 
can't do it anymore. It's just like, ah, oh, it's the worst feeling in the world. He can trash it with his three recurring credits, but he can't trash anything else or steal any agendas. This is one of the best ways for the corporation, if they have a bunch of credits, to you know score an agenda. Normally, the corporation it gets harder and harder to defend your agendas as the game goes by because you know you only have so many ice and it's harder to leverage a huge money advantage to sneak through agendas um but ash is one of the good ways you can do that another good way is um uh the corporate troubleshooter which is also from which is in the base set and it's also an hb card Uh, he's got a retrieval run of Femme Fatale, I believe, which I don't know what he's going to play to use the Femme Fatale on. This is the problem with Femme Fatale, is you have to throw it on something. Uh, but he doesn't know what any of these ice are. So it's really hard for him to choose which one to use the Femme Fatale ability on, because he doesn't know what any of them are. Oh, he's going to go after R and D. Interesting. Uh, just drag, uh, just drag the counter. Okay, that works. It doesn't. Matter, just a marker. Yeah, so there he. It looks like he's gonna, gonna play these uh, R and D interfaces, and uh, try to. Yeah, hard to remember. You have to, on Octagon, you have to target an ice before you play the Femme Fatale. If you want the Femme Fatale's ability to go off. Otherwise, you have to mark it some other way. Or, or to go off automatically. Otherwise, you have to mark it some other way. So we're playing R&D interfaces. Our Circus is playing, going to play two R&D interfaces, I think. And then start running R&D, I believe. This is an interesting strategy. I'm not... Or he's just playing the one, and then he's going to run R&D. He also has Demolition Runs. This is actually a really, really good thing. Demolition Run is very strong. Uh, if you're accessing multiple cards, you can trash multiple cards. It's not very good when you're only accessing one card, because, you know, it costs you, and you might be able to trash the card anyway. Um, but it's very, very good if you're accessing multiple cards, because you can trash all those cards. You can steal any agendas and then trash all the other cards and then immediately run again and get a bunch of points. Or, and you know, at, at see, you know, however many more cards. This card is very, very narrow. It's only, it's only good when you're, you know, you're set up to access multiple cards off of R&D, but when it's, when it's good, it's awesome. So... Uh, click that double. Okay, okay, we figured it out. We we can bypass. So he bypasses Fem or Viper, and now he's going to Eli. This is an actually interesting counter. Yes, this is um. An interesting counter to the, the strategy of just having all these ice on this remote is just saying I don't care about your remote. You can have all the ice in the world in that. I'm going to steal agendas before you even get to draw them. Uh, that is what um, Circus Fire is saying right now. He's saying I don't care about your big remote with you know it's four unres ice. And it's, you know, upgrade. <laughs> I'm just going to keep... I'm just going to run R&D and try to steal agendas before they even get into your hand. Um, and so he uses Dana Sucker or to two strength. He's going to use Corroder to uh, break its two subroutines. And then he's going to get in and see two cards. Uh... 
if he sees an agenda, he can steal it. Um, if he sees a asset, he can or an upgrade, he can probably trash it because he is wizard. Um, he can definitely trash it, but he can. But wizard gives a good deal. Yes, yes. Very good. Okay, it looks like Circus Fire is new to Octagon. Um, I I would imagine that's fairly common in this tournament. We have a lot of newcomers to Octagon. Octagon can be a bit intimidating if you don't know what's going on. I wonder if we're going to see... I, I've never been spectator. Oh, he trashed... He found an Ash 2X, whatever that is. And then he accessed the second card and did not trash it. So this is the power of Wizard. You can just trash, sort of trash Ash without it paying any credits because of the three recurring credits from Wizard. Um... I don't like Wizard as much as Noise. Uh, it's better in some specific decks. Uh, generally, if your deck is very R&D focused, then and very... Um... Oh, he's running again! Interesting. I don't know if I like this play. I would just run Archives here to get another Data Sucker counter. Um, but... Uh, or I would run HQ just to force him to res more ice. But, um, because he's paying, uh, a lot, he's going to have to end up paying five credits and a data sucker counter, but he gets the data sucker counter right back. But he's going to have to pay five credits, uh, to see one new card, and if you wait until next turn, you could see two new cards. So, I'm not sure I like that play very much. Also, he could, next turn, he could have played another... R and D interface, and then saw more new cards. So I don't, I don't really like this play. I mean, yes, it is true you have to push your advantage when you have it, but y y you could really have just waited here. I mean, the worst that would happen is that Byroid would draw a bunch of new cards, and I mean that that's bad. But I, I don't, I really, I really don't like paying five credits just to see one new card. Uh, at, at this point, normally that's okay. I mean, it's not great, but it's okay. Um, but you know, Wizard has R and D. Circus has R and D interface. He has another in his hand. He can pawn off Wild Side, so he has more clicks to work with next turn. He'll also refresh his recurring credits next turn. Um, yeah, he did. Yeah. It's okay. Uh, so, yeah, I, w I would have really waited on that on that run. I would have just ran Archives or HQ instead of running R&D again immediately. Um, and, and he didn't even get an agenda out of it. Uh, so now he's actually pretty far behind. It's going to be harder for him to run R&D next turn. Especially since uh, Byroid can respond by playing an Ice Wall out there. Um, oh, Pad Campaign. Ooh, yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, Circus really should have waited until the next turn to run again. Oh, and another Eli. Ooh. I'm really surprised he hasn't res the, the Eve Campaign, actually. Uh, this Eve campaign would be getting him money every turn. Oh, an unprotected pad campaign. This is an interesting play. I'm not sure if I like this play. I mean, what else are you going to do with the pad campaign? But I would, I would probably have rather taken a credit or installed an ice wall somewhere. Because Wizard can just run it. And, you know, he pays his three recurring credits plus a credit to, to get the pad campaign. Uh, to trash the pad campaign, and then he can doppelganger somewhere else. So this is barely even costing him anything. Uh, what are you doing? Yeah. Got target first in order to. Automate. But it's okay. okay. 
just trash. Okay, so he trashed his wild side, and he did it right. He did it before he started his turn. Uh, this is a trick um, with wild side, uh, or with Aesop's Pawn Shop and wild side. Uh, it works a little funky in Octagon, so you have to do it before you start your turn. But in real life, when you start your turn, you get to choose whether Aesop's Pawn Shop or wild side goes off first. Uh, if you wanted to trash the wild side. Um... If you wanted Aesop's Pawn Shop to go off first, you could trash the wild side, gain your three credits, and then you have four clicks. Uh, they're your normal four clicks. If you wanted the wild side to go off first, you could, you could first you'll lose the click and draw two cards, and then you could trash it um, for three credits. So it's determining whether you want three car two cards, or you know an extra click more. Um, it's sort of a, a neat little trick. This is uh, very, very bad. I, I really don't think Circus is going to win this game again. For a second, we had the two R&D interfaces. I thought he might. But making that second run on R&D was pretty bad. Bioroid is just turtling up and just, um, you know, being uber defensive right now, uh, which is... You know, kind of what you want to do, I guess. He's also kind of trying to draw into agendas. This is the point in the game where if I'm Corp, I'm like, I just want to draw agendas and get this game over with. Because you, you can't win if you don't draw the agendas, but you have to you have to draw. But if you do draw the agendas, you're basically guaranteed to win. Um, so really, uh, if I were in Bioroid shoes, the only thing I'd be worried about was protecting my R&D from, you know, attacks, because this server is just so hard to deal with right now. For Circus, Circus really can't afford to deal with it. And he's resing his pad campaign and his Eve campaign. Oh, it starts with 16 cr What just happened? What? What? Is that a bug? Oh, what? Yeah. Never seen that happen before. Eve trashed itself. Octagon bugged out and Eve trashed itself. Well, it really shouldn't have. Um, because it still had credits on it. Weird. Yeah. Um... That, that that was weird. Um, uh, I think it does automatically, but not sure. Yeah, I've never seen that happen before. Um, okay. So Byro, I did not draw an agenda. He's melanging again. I mean, more credits is always a good thing. Especially, you know, as the corp. Like, this melange has been out since turn one. It's turn 30 right now. <laughs> Come on, guys. <laughs> oh, man. I once saw... Uh, 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 I'm not going to say that. But generally, melange is one of those cards the runner will try their best to trash... Uh, it's probably not even worth it for Circus to try to trash it now, but it might be, just to see what these ice are. He does have a Crypsis, so he can't get too, too totally ruined. Um, but, oh my goodness. Really, I don't, I am not, I, th th this is just, this is just so unreal. 
Bioware has 38 credits in the bank, and he's got, you know, Pad Campaign and Eve Campaign going, which just give him more credits every turn. And, and, uh, yeah, Circus is just in the click for credits mode. If you have to spend multiple turns clicking for credits, you're, you know your, your game's not going well for you. It, it might be, I, I'm not, I'm not sure, but it might be that Circus needs a little bit more econ in his deck. Uh, I'm not 100% sure on that, but I know that, uh, some noise decks that use uh, Wild Side will also run uh, Pawn Shop. Not Pawn Shop, Personal Workshop, which it costs a lot of influence, so I'm not sure if it's worth it in Wizard. Probably isn't, in fact, but it's another Econ card. Uh, it basically gives you an extra credit per turn for installing stuff. So, really, uh, this is 5 Ice on R&D. This is the 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 R and D interface plan is not going to work anymore. Um, yeah, right now it looks like we're just waiting for Bioroid to draw the agenda so he can win the game. <laughs> I, I hate to say it, but that's honestly what's looking like right now. Uh, Circus, all all he can really do is just hold a bunch of credits so he can pr put pressure on this server. But with two upgrades there, and he doesn't know what these upgrades are. They're a Midorian and Ash, but they could be a Sand Sand, which, you know, will help him fast advance stuff. Uh, it could be a tr Corporate Troubleshooter, which would let, which would combine with, you know, the 35 credits to let him trash his programs, uh, Circus's programs, like if he had a, you know, Roto Turret out here or something. They could be... Ah, uh, just anything under the sun. Midori is even kind of strange in an HP deck. We're demo running? His hand? Mmm. I do not like this play. I said it earlier, I don't like, uh... That for some brain damage? Oh, he thinks Janus is here? He thinks it's Janus. He thinks one of these cards is Janus. But they're not. Mm. Chances over here, but uh, uh, never mind. I'm not gonna say anything because it might give away his thoughts. Yeah, um, demo run. I, I said earlier that demo run is not uh not very good when you're only hitting one card. I really wouldn't just blind demo run someone's hand. Demolition run someone's hand. If you don't know what's in there. Oh, so this is an interesting question. Does he res this cell portal? It'll send him back to the eel. Oh, he didn't res it. <laughs> Stain damage. <laughs> Said brain damage. Let's see what card he'll access. Uh, another <laughs> cell portal. Oh no. Uh see th this is why I really don't like uh like using demo run on one card because you might hit a cell portal which is really it's pretty much the most useless card in the game at this point because it doesn't do anything. Uh I guess it does com combo with Midori to be able to put on the bottom of this server. But yeah. Other than that, it doesn't do very much. Uh, see, this is... I, I really don't like the blind dem... Just playing Demolition Run for... No credit. For, you know, for one card. It, it, it's really good when you're... You know, if you have you know, Nerve Agent out, and you can hit their entire hand and make them discard their entire hand. Or you can, you know run R&D multiple times and demo run it multiple times. Why are we running... Why is he running HQ? Here's the thing that I don't understand. Why are, why are we running HQ? Um, he has this huge server of ice. He, he is probably pretty safe to put an agenda in there. There's not going to be an agenda in his hand. I, I don't understand why, why, why uh, Circus decided to run HQ. 
instead of uh, running the remote. I would definitely run the remote here over, or I would run R&D over HQ. Uh, even if it just forces him to res a couple ice, it's still worth it. And there's the ice wall. I really feel like that turn is a waste. I, I, I think Circus knows that he's in a bad position and he has to do something in order to win. But he just doesn't know what he's what he's supposed to do. I, I feel like that's what he's in. I've had games like that where I know like I have to do something in order to win. But there's no good options. <laughs> like right now, Circus really doesn't have any good options. This is all due to the melange. The melange is funding Bioroids, you know, huge stacks of ice. Without the melange, you would have much, much less credits. And it'd be much, much less scary. Um, so, Force of Nature, that was his, uh... This is this is a terrible terrible decoder. I mean, it's in faction for anarchs, but it's still just terrible. Why are we? Huh? He's gonna score Project Vitruvius um, using biotic labor. I would not even use biotic labor here. I would just trash the melange, uh, save biotic labor for later. But uh, maybe maybe uh, he wants to keep the melange around for another turn. But still, you're paying, you know, four credits to use Biotic Labor there, so. And you're using up Biotic Labor, which is a very expensive card in terms of... I, it's, it's one of the more, more powerful cards. In that, you know, it lets you score any three-cost agenda you might draw. So, yeah, this, uh... Things are not going all that well. We have a Liberated Accounts, which is another economy card. You play it, you place 16 credits off on it. You can pay a click to take uh, 4 credits off of it, and it trashes when it has 0 credits. Uh, it's like a bigger Aesop's or, uh, Armitage code busting. I really feel like... Uh, I'm not I'm not 100% sure on this, but I feel like Circus could use a a couple more economy cards in his deck. I'm not really sure what he, which ones he would want. Oh, another mid area. That's useful. <laughs> so we've drawn half his deck, and we've only seen you know six points worth of agendas. Uh, yeah, Bioroid's seen over half of his deck, and only six points worth of agendas. That means he's got at least 14 points of agendas. 14 or 15 points of agendas lurking in the last 22 cards. Which, I'm, I'm not sure his agenda loadout. Um, just because I, have, I, haven't, I, haven't, I haven't seen the deck list. I don't know what agendas he has in his deck. But I do know he has, you know, I know how, what the number of points worth it. I don't know if he has a bunch of two pointers and one pointers, or if he's running, you know, three pointers. My guess is he's running, you know, priority requisition. Uh, just because Janus means he's more likely to have priority requisition. If you manage a priority requisition, Janus, it's actually pretty good. Ooh, a Kraken! Kraken, when you you can only play it if you sold an agenda that turn, but you choose a server, and the corporation must trash an ice in the server. Here's an accelerated beta test, so we're probably going to trash that melange and play an accelerated beta test. That's what I would do in this situation. Just straight up trash that melange, play an accelerated beta test. I mean, what? No. It's not going to get any easier for him to, I mean, it's not going to, I guess he's waiting for Circus to just spend a bunch of credits breaking into a server or something like that and wasting a bunch of money, but really I think he could have I think he could have pulled that off. He could pull off an accelerated beta test there, or at least done a ton of brain damage in with Janus. Maybe trash the program with Ichi. Oh, uh, here's another R and D interface. I'm not sure where he took off credits. 
there. He's got 21 credits. He might be making a demo run. If I were him, demo run is useful. Yeah, we're going to demo run R&D, I believe. Uh, yes, so he's going to tar start targeting Ice Wall. Ice Wall only costs one credit. This actually costs... Yeah. Because of Xanadu, it actually costs uh, more for... Bioroid to res and circus to break. So it's kind of an interesting thing. I, I'm not sure if I, I, I feel like he like Bioroid wanted to install this accelerated beta test here last turn instead of uh, oh this Ichi is going to be tricky. He's got to break it, but it costs him seven to break with Femme Fatale, which is a lot. The interesting thing is if he gets in, he can crack in the server. Though I'm not even sure if that's worth it, because he'll just cr trash an ice wall. He could also crack in this server and get rid of the Chimera, probably, but... Kraken is another card I haven't really seen much play. Um, it's really... It seems like it's best when you're using Parasites and, uh... Mostly just Parasite to reduce the, um... Wow, we used Crypsis instead of Femme? That doesn't seem right. It would have actually been cheaper to use Femme Fatale there. I'm not sure why you used Crypsis. Femme Fatale would have been cheaper. This is a Century Breaker, after all. It's a very good Century Breaker, too. And so this will cost him 4 credits to get by. He can just barely get into the server. But you can't make a repeated run into it, which is what you really want to do when you play Demolition Run. Is to run, and then immediately after playing Demolition Run, to run again, and see, you know, in this case, three new cards. And Bioroy is still at 36 credits, even after having to res, you know, 2, 8, 10... Cost worth of ice. I, I, I don't know. I really think that Byroid is going to install Accelerated Beta Test on his next turn. He's going to trash this Mange and install Accelerated Beta Test. Because I don't see why he wouldn't. Because now that... Uh, Circus is really heavily depleted on credits. He only he'll only have like two credits after this run. Yeah, he only has two credits after this run. So, I mean, he, there's no way he's getting into this server with only two credits. It's just not going to happen. So, yeah, I, and and then he still has the ash to deal with. So, yeah, this has been a long game. Um, yeah, very long game. We trashed Shinichi, a Janus, and a Melange. He did not even get any agendas out of that run. <laughs> uh Byroid one of the Janus. Yeah, I think after this game I'm gonna break this up and make a separate video for the uh second game of uh Byroid running against Circus. So now it's highly, highly, highly likely that uh Bioroid will draw an agenda this turn. Yep, he drew his last accelerated beta test. I mean, Circus has been getting some of the bad luck, but, I mean, really, he... He, he kind of has been digging his own grave a little bit, too. He hasn't 
been putting enough pressure. Um, the thing is, if you have this much ice there, you, you kind of want the corp to res it. Oh, there's the corporate troubleshooter, which... <laughs> <laughs> Look at that massive server. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Yeah. If the corporation gets four, has 40 credits, it's going to be very, very hard to beat them. <laughs> right. All all Bioroid has to do now is score his two accelerated beta tests, <sighs> and he can win. Um. So he's got th this next turn. He's gonna score an accelerated beta test. Then he's, then the turn after that, he's gonna install another accelerated beta test, and then score it again after that. I don't really think Circus can stop him. Unless he has some trick I haven't seen yet, but yeah, there's a cyber fear that would have been good earlier. This is another economy card. Maybe Circus just had a weird draw where most of his economy was on the bottom. Oh, Yogg.0. Oh, this card is very, very good, especially with Data Sucker. It lets you break through pretty much any code gate for free, which is excellent. Yeah, Circus is just, just totally totally uh lost. I, I don't I don't think there's any way you can win from that from here. Ah uh, did it Yeah. There's a priority requisition. <laughs> All of his agendas were in the bottom like eighteen cards. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I knew. I, I figured he was going to run in prior positions. Are we going to activate accelerated beta test? No, <laughs> no. That's a good way to lose the game. Flip a bunch of agendas into archives, and then Circus will just walk over there and steal them. Uh, accelerated beta test is a very powerful card. Its ability is very, very powerful, but it's also very risky. Uh, when I have it, I like to either have an over advanced project Vitruvius. Or a, like, ideally an over-advanced project for Trivius. Or, uh, archive memories. Uh, to return any agendas to my hand. Um, th that combo is very powerful. An over-advanced project for Trivius is very, very good against, you know, when you have agendas and archives. Because they run archives. If you have ice there, they have to break through the ice. And then once they hit the archives... You can just use the Project Vitruvius counter to put it into your hand. It doesn't take a click or anything. You can just do it like at any time, basically. Um. Oh, hello, Darwin. Darwin is. Uh, I I uh, this is one of the, my least favorite. I'm not actually sure what it's doing in this deck, because it doesn't seem like the deck is built around Darwin at all. Um, it's actually very, it's very, very bad. It costs one credit to put, a, at the beginning of your turn you can pay a credit to put a, a power counter on it, and its strength is equal to the number of power counters, uh, and it can break any subroutine. <laughs> oh, another priority requisition. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, there are all the agendas. I mean, yeah, he's just going to install accelerated beta tests and probably click for credits or install the ice wall. Um, yeah. See, th this game is a lesson in why you want to trash Melange early. Um... At the, if you remember, on the very first turn of the game, on Circus Fire's very first turn, uh, he could have installed a Mimic and gotten past the Chimera, which was a century at the time, and trashed the Melange. If he had done that, this game would be a lot different right now, because, uh, Byroid couldn't res half this ice that he has out on the table. Right now he can res every single piece of ice, plus have some left over to use, uh, Corporate Troubleshooter, and, uh, 
uh, Ash point, whatever. There's a Morningstar, huh? So he is running Morningstar in this deck. I'm surprised he got a Corroder instead of a Morningstar earlier. New special word. Interesting. And that's game. Uh, Circus or Bioroid should just uh, advance the accelerated beta test three times, score it, and win. Was this, is this another agenda? No, an Eve campaign. I mean, if Circus had gotten luckier, he would have won the game, but I don't feel like he got particularly unlucky either. Um. It looks like he just has one Crypsis in his deck, and maybe some Darwin. So it's not—it's not like he had a really good chance of gra grabbing that to break the Chimera. Uh, I want to switch sides. So I'm going to, um, no, need to make new game. Alright, I'm going to end this video here. Cool. I'm going to end the video right here, and then uh, I will start another one soon, so thanks for watching.